91X. What sad news to learn of an icon in radio passing away and such a good guy, too. Hey, it's Marty. And Danielle. We would like to share with you our remembrances of Steve West that we had on the radio. Here's Steve talking about his very first day at 91X. And now it didn't go so well. <laughs> I got fired from my own job in San Clemente. I was working at a radio station in San Clemente in 82 doing mornings. I managed to get myself fired by playing um, Hurt So Good by John Cougar. And the general manager being uber conservative was uh, like, we can't be playing that, it's too sexual. I disagreed. I was found myself quickly without a job. So I went to San Diego and I went around all the different radio stations there and I had a, a somebody walk man with me in a cassette and walked into all the stations one by one. Couldn't get anybody until I, I got to Pacific Highway. Walked in and asked the... Uh, reception desk for five minutes at the program director's time. Jim Gillera. Jimmy came out, much to my surprise, and uh, <clears throat> I gave him the Walkman, which was all queued up. He listened to a couple of seconds of it. He said, can I keep this? I said, sure. Popped the set out, gave it to him. He said, we'll call you. Three weeks later, sure enough, I get a phone call. It's Jim. Um, we'd like you to come down and uh, talk about working with us. Hmm. What year was that, Steve? Uh, that was uh, February of 1983, uh, beginning of February. And uh, so I went down there, met with him in the early afternoon at the Pacific Highway office, and I didn't realize at the time that the studio was across the border. So he said, come on, we're going to the studio. So, oh, okay. If we get in the car, we go to the studio from Pacific Highway in his car. And I sat down there while he did his three-hour shift. It was three hours back then. Coming back, I got into a little bit of a problem. Because I showed him my passport and my visa had expired. And they thought, oh, this is not good. So I went back to the studio and uh, spent the night at the studio freaking out so anyway here I am stuck in this country what the f*** are going to do now well, we'll tell you what he ended <laughs> up doing how he meets Billy Bones of the radio station who helped him get back to the states from TJ I came down to work one morning you know I was working uh, middays 10 to 2 so 10 o'clock and there's this dude in the production studio down at the studios in Mexico now, you know, there were, generally there weren't, you know, any extra people down there. So mm. here's this guy. I didn't know exactly what was happening. So here's this dude pacing around in the production studio. And, and he had, had had to spend the night in the production studio. <laughs> and it was not luxurious, I promise you that. <laughs> but at least it was carpeted, right? <laughs> and uh, he's pacing around and, uh, you know, he's smoking cigarettes. And so uh, when I found out what happened, um, I guess they um, they got him up because he didn't have any money or anything. I mean, he was just, you know, never been to Tijuana before. They got him a motel for a few days, and then the PD got some money. He got a place down at Playa Estina, right on the sandals. But periodically, he would have to go across the border to take care of one thing or another, a lot of which had to do with getting his, you know, passport and his visa status resolved. So, but he couldn't legally enter the country. So I was told, sneak Steve across the border. Okay. <laughs> sneak Steve across the border. Okay. Federal offense, yeah. no problem. So when you cross the border every day, you know that the um, immigration control guys will ask you, they'll go, what country are you a citizen of? And most people would say U.S. But sometimes they would say, what is your citizenship? And you would say American. And they would also ask you sometimes, where were you born, right? So I would be in line at the border, getting ready to sneak Steve across. I'd say, Steve, you got to sound like an American. So I'd say, say American. And he'd go, American. i go, no, Steve, you're not, you're, you're not a cracker, right? Uh, American, enunciate. So we got that down pretty well, and U.S. was easy. And then I said, Steve, it's not California. It's California. <laughs> so several times, many times, you practiced it. Him across the border, and he passed with flying colors. If the truth be known, 
more often than not, we were smoking a J when. We sure, were sure. Eighties, <laughs> dude. Eighties, Steve West. Eighties. Come on. Also, Steve's immigration papers didn't get worked out the way they could have or should have, so he ended up spending almost a year down in TJ living there. Here he is talking about Peter Tosh, Debbie Harry, and his favorite interview of all time, Elvis Costello. One time we'd set to interview Elvis Costello, and he had a reputation for hating the media. And I was, like, petrified. And when we got to the place where um, he was appearing it's a sports arena and we showed up with the van and it was a beautiful day outside and the van had open side doors right and we sat he came outside and we sat in the parking lot the sports arena on the edge of the van on the side where the door opened and we had this wonderful conversation on camera just surprised me. I mean, he was the most, one of the more pleasant, very talkative, you know, we'd chat about anything you wanted to chat about, didn't have an attitude at all. It was, it was wow, this is not what I heard about him. And then, you know, we had interviews like Peter Tosh. There was a couch, two couches, right? And then there was this table in the middle. And he's on this one couch, and I'm across here with the camera behind me, over the shoulder shot. And he's got this great big giant split that he's smoking through the entire interview. Yes. Right, didn't share either. <laughs> I know Lenny had a hell of a job trying to edit the thing so that it wasn't too obvious what he was doing. That was kind of amusing. One time I interviewed Debbie Harry, she was a... That was a dud. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of good ones. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said, Steve West. I know he punched me in the mouth if it didn't remind everybody that he did beat cancer once, Mm -hmm. and then it came back. 16 years of fighting it and being an advocate. Steve West, our good friend, is gone at the age of 68. L.A. had a British DJ who played all the U.K. hits. His name was Richard Blade. Uh, Here is Blade on the phone. I called him. I said, hey, could you share some fun stories or, you know, Remember Steve with us tomorrow mm-hmm. morning, and Blade so kind to call up and give some dirt on Steve. <laughs> you know, I wish I could give you dirt on him. He's one of those guys that you, you can't find dirt on because he was, you know, what you heard is what you got with Steve. He was one of those people that loved listeners more than he loved the business of radio, you know, because as we all know, sometimes behind the scenes, radio is, is not all that it seems. And he wanted to share his love of music with them. And, and I think that's what made him stand the test of time, because that comes through rather than just be someone who gives, you know, time and temperature and that's it. You know, he was very aware that what he was doing was not a job, but kind of a vocation for him, because he enjoyed finding the songs that were that, oh, wow, for the listener. And whether it was, you know, back in the 80s with the new one from uh, the Smiths or from Morrissey, or, or whether it was a, a newer one from The Killers, he was always at the forefront of that because he wanted to give that person in the car with him that oh wow moment. And I think that's one of the things for DJ. Remember that most of your audience are listening by themselves, so you've got to be that friend sitting next to them. And I think Steve was so many people's friends. You guys had a mutual friend, Terry Nunn. She and the band Berlin had the very first song on our radio station, Sex. I think you guys probably, did you ever all hang out together? I would have loved to, but you know, Terry did a lot of gigs down in San Diego, and uh, every time she went down, she would always see if Steve could be there to mm-hmm. be the guy on stage to introduce Berlin, because yeah. she knew how you know, indebted she was to the exposure that he gave them in the early days. And so many other people. I mean, I heard of Steve West passing through my friend Johnny Bassos, the drummer of Oingo Boingo. Oh, my gosh. Right. So many friends through the years, right? Musicians and listeners to the radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I loved him for that. Tim Pyle's loudspeaker host grew up listening to Steve West and watched him on the 91X TV show in the 80s. You're watching the 91X TV show. Hi, I'm Steve West, and I'm Pam Wolf. And welcome to the 91X TV show. And well, Pam and I are both lovers of great music, right, Pam? Mm-hmm. And we decided to go out and find out where all the great music was happening in East County, right here at the Stratus. 
Located in Spring Valley, the people at the Stratus really know how to party. I love what he's wearing. He had a problem with sleeves. <laughs> he did not like them. He did not like sleeves. He was not a fan of sleeves. Uh, who was a fan of Steve West and the Stratus nightclub in East County? Tim Piles, the mayor of San Diego Music, who joins us on the phone. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Marty and Danielle. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> love you, brother. Thanks for sharing the memories. You have lots of them of Steve, right? Being a young man here in San Diego when 91X came to existence, it changed my life. It changed the face of San Diego for young people. And we had this cool, hip British DJ. Like, that wasn't a thing. He is he is 91X, I think, more than any DJ that's ever existed there that's in my eyes. I mean, the guy was a pirate radio DJ on a ship, I believe, in the U.K. and comes to San Diego. Right. And the time he spent with people and how he touched people and his love of music. And I don't even think of him as, you know, the resurrection thing. I mean, I just don't want to envision him in his heyday like that video that you got to watch with him and his sleeveless shirt <laughs> in all his essence. <laughs> just being Steve West, cooler than any of us ever could be. He was an advocate for animals, <laughs> hunger in San Diego. And he fought cancer for 16 years, raising money on the radio and bringing awareness to prostate and esophageal cancer. Thank you, Steve West. If Steve West has ever touched your life in any way, please share your stories with us at 91X on Facebook. Actual Steve West audio provided by Mo Malady.